Let me start the uh, the recording. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to the opening of the third Moodle MOOC on WizIQ. My name is Nelly Deutsch, and there's Jason in his French hat. Is that a French hat, or what is that? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, it doesn't matter if I get any closer, right? I'm not going to see it if I don't see it, right? All right, so if you could add in the chat box, hello, Virginia, good to see you. Haven't seen you in years. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and everything else that you'd like to add, uh, don't make it too personal because this is being recorded and uh, you may not want certain information in there. So uh, if you want your email known around the globe, Oh, Virginia from Virginia. Wow. That's great. I should be Nellie from Nellie, whatever that is, and Jace from Chase. So uh, how are you, Jace? Um, Jace in the on place. This amazing, amazing, amazing day. People will be coming in because the door is kind of small, so uh, they'll be pushing their way in. <laughs> That's how it usually happens. So... Um, We've got North Carolina, Venezuela. Aki made it from Thailand, I believe. You're rocking in your chair in Bangkok. That's great. Too bad we can't see everybody, right? So take a look at the presenters. These are the presenters for Moodle MOOC 3. We've got twin sisters from Cyprus um, on the top left. <laughs> I love the twin twin sisters from Cyprus. That's a that's a great way to start. I like that. You like that? And then just under that, <laughs> we've got Dr. Dale from uh, the United States and Antonio from the United States. We've got Lynn from Guana. We've got Liz from Australia. We've got Cheryl here at the bottom left from the United States. We've got Sylvia, originally from Ireland, now in Greece. We've got a participant from Portugal, Carlos. We've got uh, Glenn from Canada. We've got a couple. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? Uh, Mamie, who writes for the Huffington and her husband. They'll be talking about their relationships and other relationships. We've got Eduardo, originally from Argentina, now living in Israel. We've got Mark. Can't you, can you believe that I know these names? Can you uh, wrap them after I finish um, there? We've sure. got Graham Stanley, currently in, I don't know, is he in Portugal or in South America? But he's from the UK originally. We've got Nancy, who's here from North Carolina, United States. We've got Zaid, is Zaid in the house? From Malaysia. We've got Inendita from India. We've got Jace from everywhere around the world, from Paris, from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And from, well, I don't know, wherever is next. We've got Ludmilla from the United States, originally from uh, Russia. We've got Vance from, um, originally from Texas, now in the, uh, somewhere in the Middle East. He keeps changing it, so I'm not quite sure. We've got James, originally from Canada, now living also in the uh, Middle East. We've got Charles Goodger, from, originally from the UK, then from um, Latvia, and now uh, kind of going back and forth from Tel Aviv. We've got Ev Eba from Finland. We've got Ron from the uh, South Africa. We've got Rachel Sale from the United States. We've got Alexander, who actually coined the term MOOC. Would you believe it? Um, yes, Alexander, uh, sorry, Brian Alexander. We've got Justin Hunt, originally from New Zealand, now living in Japan. And he's the developer <laughs> of Poodle. Isn't that great? He's an, originally an English language teacher, but also a software developer. Keep your eye on this guy. He's done amazing stuff with Poodle on Moodle. And we also have uh, Shelly Terrell from the United States, currently living in Europe and going around the world. We've got Ron, and my internet connection just went. Wow. That is not a good surprise, is it? So it looks like uh, we were booted out. Jace, I hope you didn't um, go too far there. So uh, 
let me uh, boot it out. Boot it out. Server on. Okay, I'm waiting to get back. Uh, let me just uh, stop the recording here, pause the recording. I don't know if that's a good idea. I'm going to keep on going. So you guys are going to hear my voice, and I'm going to continue this as I go through Shelley uh, Terrell, okay? And then I'm going to go, th and then uh, Phil. Phil is from the United States, and then we've got Remish, who's from India. So I see people are writing in the chat. I'm not able to get them. I'm out and some are in. I see eight people. Eight are in. All right. So this is really exciting. Bravo. All right. So um, let's go back to Jace. I guess you were doing stuff. Please don't do anything. Leave it alone. All right. So I'm out. Eight are in, eight are out. Anyways, and looks like somebody's moving the slides. Who is moving the uh, slides? This is so exciting. I am so thrilled that I can see things happening and nobody can see me. But I'm recording this, so presumably Jace is singing and I'm not there to hear it, which is really disappointing because I like to be there, but I'm not. So let me try to... Uh, just uh, do something here. I'm going to try to uh, go through the class again. Uh, I see that uh, support is not supporting me on Skype. No, I'm only seeing it initializing. All right, so I'm back. And then maybe we can do it together, together a little bit. Oh, there she is, Dr. Yeah. Back to end. Anyways, she left, she's back in. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because I'm recording this through YouTube. I mean, for YouTube, which means that I was talking and I was sharing this. You'll see what I was doing later on. And I'm also talking on Skype on my PC. So we went through Ronen from uh, Gwazer from uh, Canada, but originally from Israel. And we've got Phil from the United States and Remish from India. So that's it. We can uh, now continue with what we plan to do. I only saw eight people as I was, you know, I wasn't really gone, Jace. It was like, there was like a screen, you know, I could see everything happening. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I, I couldn't make the screen kind of, you know, pull back. Well, we couldn't see, we couldn't see you and we couldn't hear you. So oh, that means you were gone for us. I was talking away, and I, I mean, for the recorder, uh, right? I mean, for the recorder. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's good. So then yeah. the people who were here heard me talk. We were gonna, we were talking yeah. about the song. I was rapping the names. We were doing all that stuff, and then yeah. we got the recording with you on it. So yeah, I could see two for the like, price of one. Yeah, I could see something that was happening, and I was so sorry because you know how much I love listening to your rap and you know, us dancing on my seat here. <laughs> Uh, oh, we didn't do it yet. I'm still going oh, to do, still oh, gonna do the song you. whenever you're ready. Here. I'm not. I'm not. Thank you. All right. That's great. All right. So I hope you can hear me. Uh, I see that my sound is kind of dropping. Are you able to hear me well or is it kind of dropping? It looks like my sound is dropping. 
All right. Uh, anytime you lose my sound, let me know because I can. I'm kind of following it here on the bar, and it doesn't seem to be reaching. To, oh, it's great. All right. But if I sound too loud, I apologize. All right. So a little bit about before we start uh, having some fun. A little bit of uh, housekeeping here. First of all, the uh, the MOOC is going to be divided into two areas. One area is the Moodle where you'll be learning about Moodle as uh, beginners and non-beginners, as well as managers of Moodle. In addition, we'll be on WizIQ with the live presentations. Now, these live presentations are not only connected to Moodle, and this is going to be happening three times a year. Three times a year, you'll have a chance to learn about new things happening on Moodle, as well as learn about other things. Okay, so this, all of this is clickable on the PowerPoint presentation, which I'll share with you later on. All right, so let's take a look at the live classes. The live classes, such as this one, are on WizIQ. They're not through the Moodle, even though they could have been. And the presenters are amazing. You saw a list of the presenters, and these are some of the topics. Lots of topics. There is a presentation every day for the next 28 days. All right, so get ready. First of all, we're going to be talking about becoming creative super learners. Notice that MOOC and Massive Online Organic Cows. Can you get that, get, uh, Jason? Guess who is going to be giving that session on Massive Online Organic Cows. You what can't stop with the cow thing with the MOOC because of the moo. <laughs> Otherwise, there's nothing about cows that relates in any way to moves. But, you know, the, the MOO, it's just... Right, we'll get to that. Anyways, we're going to have a comedian on. And this comedian is going to talk about... Uh, massive online organic cows or MOOC. Okay, so MOOC. We're also going to be talking about the role of distance education, risk the risk method, which is a way to live. We're going to talk about learning to teach and collaborate with emerging technologies, educating young people, equipping teens to deal with pressures, and also using Moodle to align learning goals. Oh, the places you'll go, insights into e-pedagogy, the role of distance education, as I said, using creating scientific questions with Moodle quiz, proactivism in a changing educational arena, social networks and learning management, an analysis of the Facebook group design, innovations in language learning, creative comic collaboration for fun fluency, hiding the teacher with poodle. I mean, look at these topics. They're going to be amazing. Connecting online to improve. And, yeah, you like that, eh, Jace? You came back for hiding the teacher no, with Dr. poodle. Nelly, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is, is that illegal in every <laughs> country, hiding the teacher with poodle? <laughs> yeah, well, notice the spelling on the poodle. It's P-O-O-D, all right, capital L-L. -L. <laughs> So it's a little bit different. How you... Anyways, teaching. Serious. Look at this one. Teaching digital humanities. The mighty handful, big drivers of change in higher education, music and mind. No, it, it reminds me of. <laughs> Go ahead. It, 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 it reminds me of. Hey, who took my rhythm and rhyme? That's not, that's not me. Somebody's using my rhythm and rhyme. Are you uh, sure? It reminds me of those race racehorses. You know, racehorses have those really perplexing names that nobody understands except the owner. Uh, right. Well, music and mime, rhythm and rhyme is with Jason R. Levine. I'm sure you've heard of him. He's pretty popular these Me? days. Is it you? I think that might be Charles. Charles has the rhythm and rhyme thing too, so... Okay, but I think it's, well, maybe. I think that's Charles. Supporting, well, maybe you forgot what your session's about. Supporting adult oh, yeah, that's learning, Charles. blended learning. And then we're going to go into Africa with networking educational technology across 
Africa Open Educational Resources, Multi MOOC. What was that all about? Creative Technology, and this is really amazing, with Dale Eberwein on the Nova Science Publishers. He's got this amazing thing called FP e-learning system for education and then using Moodle to teach English as a foreign language. So lots of interesting things and um, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, Moodle courses. There are actually four Moodle course areas. One is Moodle for beginners, one is Moodle for non-beginners, that's everybody else who's not a beginner. Moodle practice area for you as teachers, and then Moodle for managers. So you'll be a manager of a Moodle course. And all this is on Moodle 2.5. And if you really want to practice Moodle 2.6, you'll have to wait to... Jace, when is the next MOOC? In June, in June, in June 2014. So that's what we're going to do the Moodle 2.6. Oh, the next Moodle MOOC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Moodle 2.6 for the Moodle MOOC in June. And that's it. All right, Jace, let's start the fun. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Well, let's ask if everybody's ready there. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for you adding that. Ready, spaghetti. There's the link. All right. All right, so I'm ready. I'm ready. So what we're going to do, everybody, thank you, Dr. N. That's Dr. Nelly D. Not only the MOOC 3 uh, guru goddess uh, of presenters, but also the co-producer of the weekly English workout with, with Fluency MC, which we will be bringing back in 2014. Dr. Nelly, before we play the song, what I wanted to do is, is look at the words together. So just the PDF up here and do a little uh, chanting together. Then I want to do, do the song and, and that way if people feel a little more comfortable with it, they might have a little more fun when we put the music on. So can everybody see the PDF? For me, it's it's uh, off center a little. There we go. Is it? For me, yeah. I don't know for everybody else. Oh, it's moving around. Is it better now? Uh, 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 a little. Whoa! <laughs> it's got it's got wheels. It's got legs. If you bring it up, yeah. If you go up to the top, you want to make it large. This oh, no. Well, why don't you play around? Yeah, that's there? good. Uh, it's better. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Well, well we, you got to stop, though. I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here. Right. Hands. Oh, you're see? not. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on with it here. Okay, this should be okay. Can everybody see okay? Oh, yes. Decrease the percentage. Thank you. Somebody's thinking here. Now it's Okay, small. I'm not. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, that's a little small though. Let's let's try this. That's pretty good. No, no, I, I agree. Let's do 175. We're just going to go a little bit through it together. So it goes like this. If you want to try to go with me like this, I'm going to do it slow. Then we're going to put a beat on. Yeah, the, 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 the PDF's dancing to the beat. All right, it goes like this. Check it out. We're in the Moodle Moot. In Wiz IQ, as a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view in Wiz IQ. There's so much we can do. Let's try that again. We're in the Moodle MOOC in Wiz IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Whoa! <laughs> it moved again. Oh, hey, hey! Stop moving. <laughs> yeah, let's try it again. I don't know why it's moving by itself. We're in the Moodle MOOC. In Wiz IQ, as a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view in Wiz IQ. There's so much we can do. We're open source as a group. We pack force. The loop is all we are. Wherever we are, near and far, we align to learn. We yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect. Reflect and inject much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. 
All right. I hope you're following. And also, sorry, I don't know why this thing keeps moving around. I hope you're following and also thinking about these ideas here. And then I'll put the music on and we'll do it. So check this out. We yearn to connect our intellects intersect with then inject much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. Here we go with the chorus. Let's go. We're in the mood of MOOC. In Wiz IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. In Wiz IQ, there's so much we can do. Lost sounds. Can everybody hear me? You want me to make it smaller? I'm just checking out. Is that better? It's okay here. All right. Now check this out. For a massive class to have class and be a blast, it has to surpass this other class of flutes they call moves. Don't conceal the real deal's the seal. We've got to socially engage on the world stage. For a massive class to have class and be a blast, it has to surpass this other class of flutes they call moves. Don't conceal the real deal's the seal. We've got to socially engage on the world stage. Can anybody tell me? And where's Nelly? What's up with the dancing? Nelly, where did you go? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm Are insulted. we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> she wants the music. She's like, what's this chanting slow thing? But before we do the music, I just want to ask you, do you know what seal is? The real deal is the seal? What's the seal? All right. Let's see. Wait, don't say anything, Jace. What is the seal? Ah, socially engaged. Socially engage. Can you look at the bottom? I think it is. It's on the bottom there. Yes, yeah, socially engage. Social engagement for active learning. This is what Dr. Nelly brings. I hope I bring. People like Sylvia bring. People who are committed to doing MOOCs where, number one, it's not about the teacher teaching. It's about the learners learning. And number two, it's about learners actively learning, constructing learning with each other socially in an environment where there's no limit to how they can intersect their intellects. And that's what this song is all about. Isn't that right, Dr. Nelly? Yes. It's about teaching <laughs> teachers to be teachers who allow learners to be learners and to teach. Beautiful. So let's put on the music. Dr. Nelly, can you be my DJ and put the music on? Yep, if I can find where you stashed it away. There it is. <laughs> All right, everybody, let me see you put your hands together. Put your hands together. When you learn, if we're entertained. And when you're entertained, you learn. You know what I'm saying? You learn. You learn. That's it. <laughs> That's how we're right. We're in the mood on moves. It was that cute with the crew. We pursued the new interview. Uh oh. <laughs> Hang on now. I can't hear it. I got it. I don't have that. Oh, I gotta get my headphones on. We pack force. The loop is all we are. Wherever we are, near and far, we align to learn. My bad. My bad. Our intellects intersect, reflect, then inject much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. All right, Jace, you got to get your head. He hates. Jace hates wearing a headset. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> no, no, I just forgot. I forgot. It's my bad. It's my bad. Okay. Let's I see. am ready spaghetti. All right. All right, everybody, let me see you put your hands together. If when you look, Moodle, you move, team. and with IQ, as a crew, we pursue, you know new, renew, and review. Everywhere we share, and a bad point, and with IQ, there's so much we can do. To the O, to the O, to the C. We're in the mood. We're open source as a group. We pack force. The loop is over y'all. Wherever we are, near and far, we align to work. We yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect, reflect, and inject. Much love into our projects. What happened to the music, y'all? <laughs> Jace, my dear, everybody has. I didn't listen, listen. Turn it off. <laughs> Jace, Jace, hold it. Are you? Listen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everybody has a different computer system, and right, pace, which means that when you sing at your own pace, we're hearing it at another pace. 
Yes. So let, here's an idea. Why don't, why don't I play the song out of my speakers like I usually do? Exactly. Okay. We're going to do that. Hang on one second. One second. Let me just get it up here. All right. But that was. Then I don't have to use my headphones either. One second. No, you don't. All right. So while Jace is getting. Uh, All right. His, oh, you got it? I'm ready to go, I think. Okay. Every All right, everybody. Let me see you put your hands together. If when you learn, you're entertained. If you're entertained, you learn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get ready now. We're in the mood of mood. It was IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. It was IQ. There's so much we can do. As a crew, we back. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you gotta turn it off, baby. We have to turn <laughs> Nelly, I don't need the MP3. We gotta turn the MP3 off. Hang on. I, I got something else on my end, so MP3 got it's gotta go off. No MP3. All right. Let me try that again. I got it on my end only, and that way we're not gonna have to worry about it. But it's still, second. it's still loud, Jace. It's still loud. I think it's better if you put the background music and you sing. Sorry. Yeah, I think it would be better if you would put on okay. the music and you sing. Is that possible? I don't have that. That's the problem. I just have the song. Oh, I see. All right, so let's hear the song. But I don't think. I don't think it's because it's too loud. I don't know. It, I, it, I just gotta. I just gotta make sure. Okay, I'll put it on without my doing it if it's loud. If that's know. the problem. I Hang on. Why. We'll just put it on. It's so loud. Okay. It's too loud, huh? Yes. All right. Well, hang on one sec. It. What are you doing? Okay. I'll put on. I'm gonna put on the song. From, from here. Okay. Do you see it? I think so. You sure? Okay. Yeah, except it's no longer in the playlist. So here we go. I put it back. Let me see you put your hands together. When you learn, you're entertained. And when you're entertained, you learn. You know what I'm saying? Is it loud enough? We're in the mood, oh mood, in Wiz IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. In Wiz IQ, there's so much we can do. We're open source. As a group, we pack force. The loop is all we are, wherever we are. Near and far, we align to learn. We yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect, reflect. Inject much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. We yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect, reflect, then inject much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to, our, to prospects. our prospects. We're in the mood of the mood. In Wiz IQ, as a group, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. In Wiz IQ. There's so much we can do with the moon and with IQ. As a group, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view and with IQ. There's so much we can do with the moon and with IQ. As a group, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view and with IQ. There's so much we can do. Do it with me now. Yeah, come on, come on. Socially engage on the world stage. Socially engage on the world stage. Woo! <laughs> All right, Chase. Very, very good. Now, no music, and you M sing it. To the O to the D L E M to the O. All right. O to the perfect. D perfect. All right. Check this out now. If you want to do it with me, you can. Here we go. So, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're in the mood of mood and with IQ. With a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view and with IQ. There's so much we can do. We're in the mood of mood and with IQ. With a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we care and 
the airports of you and whiz IQ. There's so much we can do. We're open source as a group. We pack force. The loop is all we are. Wherever we are, we align to learn. We yearn to connect. Our intellects intersect, reflect, and inject. Much love into our projects with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. Yeah, yeah, we yearn to connect. Our intellects intercept and inject. Much love into our projects. That's with mutual respect. There's no limit to our prospects. Go talk to Nelly. Check it out now. Here we go. We're in a mortal mood. It was IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. It was IQ. There's so much we can do. We're in a mood or mook. It was IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view. It was IQ. There's so much we can do for a massive class to have class and be a blast. It has to surpass this other class of flutes. They call moves. Deal deals to seal. We've got to socially engage on the world stage for a massive class to have class and be a blast it has to pass this other class of flukes they call moves don't conceal the real deals the seal we gotta socially engage on the world stage now everybody do with me ready check this out we gotta socially engage on the world stage come on socially engage on the world stage socially engage on the world stage we gotta socially engage on the world stage Woo. Great, <laughs> if you, great. If you like that, if you like that song, Dr. Nelly, I think the MP3 is available in the course where everybody can download that for free. Oh, and the lyrics also. If they're not, we'll make sure we put them up in Moodle Mook 3. Exactly. I think Thanks for the claps. Thanks for the encouragement. Peace and much respect to all Moodlers worldwide. Thank you. That was awesome. 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 That was great. And and you got it. Look at the words. I mean, the words are amazing. It's not just a rap song. I mean, if you look at the words, you can do this in your class, you know, at a really, really high yeah, level. You can do it. What? No, let me just mention, I'm really glad you said that. Sorry. But, but the thing about rap music that's different from a song is you can do it as poetry, as prose, spoken, word, whatever you want. So check this out. You could do it like this. We're in the mood of mood in this IQ. As a crew, we pursue, renew, and review. Everywhere we share and compare points of view, in Wiz IQ, there's so much we can do. So it's like you can make it like Dr. Seuss, just like you can take Dr. Seuss and rap Dr. Seuss, which is amazing, by the way. That's something I got to do. That's, what, that's on my list. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing. The words are so smart, and, and they have so much to say about the history of the MOOCs, uh, and maybe the Thank future you. of MOOCs as well. I mean, Jason, it, you know, nobody really pays attention, I think, to the words of most rap songs, but they all have really deep meanings that can go into your past, your present, and your future. And this is exactly what it is. If you think about what are MOOCs, okay, they're not just the cow going MOOC. What? <laughs> Uh, they are socially engaging, and that's the idea. And I think that's what Jason um, was trying to uh, demonstrate and model in the first ELT MOOCs on WizIQ, and it's what I try to do with uh, Moodle MOOC 1 on WizIQ. Not everybody's happy with it because universities would not be too happy about uh, people going off and creating their own MOOCs, okay? Because there's a reason for the new MOOCs. And, and the reason is to recruit students. I mean, let's face it, everybody's finally admitting it, that the reason the university started Jace with all these MOOCs was to recruit students because they're losing students. Students are finding that they can get all the information they need on the internet. They don't have to go to classes and pay a lot of money to get a degree that they can't use anyways when they finish school because Nobody's interested in your degree if you don't have skills uh, that are, uh, you know, in need. And that's why there are a lot of MA students and doctoral graduates, you know, who can't find a job. So uh, it's actually a way to bring learning for free to anyone who wants it without a degree. And is that such a bad thing? Is it a bad thing to learn without getting a degree? I mean, Job did it. Mr. Microsoft never got a degree. 
or did he did he get something uh, honorary? Okay, so something to think about whether we need degrees in the future. Jace, what do you have to say about that? Do we need how many of you think we need degrees for the future, or can we just learn through MOOCs? And well, I can just put my two cents in for a second. I just wrote it in there. Yeah, it took you a long time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, to me, it's very, it's, a, it, it's such a basic idea. It's such a basic idea that e some people don't want you to know about it. Like, like people that might be losing money. Yeah. So some people don't, can't, some people can't conceive that it could be as simple as this but let me tell you what i think we have physical places of learning because you have people there who had knowledge and could communicate that knowledge and they're not going to be able to go everywhere to every person so people paid if they were lucky or if they lived near enough or both to come to those places to learn or if they knew the right people to get into that university or had enough money well, the internet has changed that completely. So the way universities work is not the way our brains work and our motivation works uh, for learning. On the contrary, we are on the go learners who do not want to be kept into a room to learn. The reason you were in a one place to learn and close the door is because that's where the people who knew more gathered to tell you. Now, now we don't have to do that. It's the opposite. People all over the world who have knowledge can share it. So. It's impossible that we are going to be learning in confined in a physical place in the future. It's just impossible. Thank you. That's my two cents. And Knives also mentioned here that it's a chance for people to physically meet for learning. But we can physically meet for learning at a coffee shop, Knives. I mean, that's right. We don't necessarily have to go to university and pay a lot of money and, and get a degree. And Maria says you need a degree, a PhD, to teach at a university. Who wants to teach at a university? Is that a reason to get a PhD so you can teach at a university? If universities are going to... Well, I think it's going to take a little while. <laughs> if universities... But it's going to change, you know. Yeah. Universities are going to be gone. They're going to be gone when our grandchildren are around because there's going to be no use for them. Who's going to be, you know, there for an education when you can get it without a universities? They're not places of learning I, I anymore. Think, I think Go ahead, Jace. I think what Nevis just, what, what just said is very important, that, that she said university was a very important experience. Mm. And, and there are two things I want to say about this. The first is, back to the coffee shop thing. People are not going to want to stop physically meeting and taking together. It's not about this. So people are going to continue to do that. They are not going to be, they're not going to be forced into one little room with one teacher, with one textbook, they're going to be meeting around all this amazing stuff everywhere. The second thing is, Nevis can't imagine what it would be like without a university, but my grandchildren might be able to. Just like, it's that old thing where you don't miss what you never had. So we have to be very careful here. You know, I can talk to my son about how great my college experience was. Just like my grandfather can talk about how great, you know, something you know, horses were or something else i mean it, it, it's very hard but you have to i think consider how <laughs> how important this is we we never think that things could change and people and it could be you know not the same for somebody else but you know books are a great example you know i mean i love paper books but i understand that if i've never seen them before like a few more generations that are coming you're not going to miss it well, you know what I was thinking, Jace, that I, I just wrote it down. I learned more at home from my parents and later on from my own children than I did at university or from anybody else in this world. So, you know, I'm not really sure that, and I have a PhD, I'm not really sure that I got anything out of university except a survival, to survive it, to make it, to learn to take exams to get high grades, mm. <laughs> that's what it was all about. Yeah, and, and I think another thing too is like, my son, my son is 11, you know, all of us here are in transition, right? We, we, have, we have the physical school experience that is part of us, but think about future generations. You know, 
yeah, I miss my books too. I don't, I don't like computer. I don't like eBooks. But you know what? My son and my daughter and their kids and their kids' kids. You don't miss what you never had. Now, books and reading is not going to go away. It's, it's all about how things manifest themselves in new ways. And, you know, the whole idea of what is learning and teaching. Don't you think that grandchildren, future generations might think it's strange that people had to pay a lot of money to sit in one room to learn from one person from just a static textbook? To me, that is already a very bizarre concept. Dr. Nelly, over to you. Yeah, and I'm just, <laughs> I just lost you. What sounds ridiculous? Did you say something you said sounds ridiculous? Oh, oh. I'm, not sure. I'm not sure what that person was uh, saying. No, I'm not sure Susan. who that was. But look, I think that what Helena is saying is perfectly true. And, and, and there's, I mean, you look at Facebook. Ah, ah sitting in class is ridiculous. Oh, I see. Not just sitting. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's not. <laughs> sitting is ridiculous in the first place unless you're doing something. But, you know, I'm wondering what um, Helena said about your PhD is becoming really not that, and even your MA, I mean, who really cares whether you have an MA or a PhD or a BA or, or anything? It's what you do that counts. And I'm wondering if this is not reality. You know, what are your skills? What are you good at? What can you, what can you create? What can you produce? You know, if you're a great chef, you don't have, and there are some great chefs, and they're they're making a lot of money. Some of them, you know, have their own talk shows and their own cooking shows and so on, and they don't need a degree to get a TV program and make a lot of money or to travel around the world. And I'm just giving chefs as an example of uh, people that used to be considered very, very low, you know, on the scale, and today chefs are like, you know, they're idolized. Yeah. You know, you know another thing, Ellie, I really like to think about it, see, see, what, see what people here think about learning, and, and is, do you ever feel like it's a little bit like how we eat? So you know how in some cultures, you don't sit down all the time with the whole family and have a big meal together, right? Because we, we graze, we have snacks, we have informal lunches, we, we, you know, things like this, and our bodies actually right, are a bit more designed to be on the go, you know, finding food, eating that way. So the way I feel about education in the future is finally, right, we're going to be able to learn mobile, when we want, where we want. We have freedom to eat like that. The way education has been, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's not because it's the best way. It's because it was the only way, because of physical reasons, right? I mean, if you could have all your professors and all these people in your house, in your car, <laughs> wherever you're going, right, you would do it. You know, if, if you're poor and geographically handicapped, as it were, like you can't, you can't get to a university, what would the, what's the point? It's because there hasn't been another alternative. So I feel like we are social people on the move. And when you're sitting in a class with a small group of people arbitrarily chosen to be with you, that is counterintuitive to learning. And the way the future will be is more social, more engaged. It's a paradox. We think that, oh, it's not physical classes. It's not going to be social. It's going to be the opposite, right? Physical classes in the future, when we look back, will seem not social at all. They'll seem so limited because they won't be with all the possible combinations of people and professors and everything else that in the future we'll have. Danny mentioned something interesting here. He said that in the virtual, you can't really get uh, into things deeply, but you can't in the face-to-face -face either, Danny. I think there's a lot of wasted time looking at people and evaluating what they look like, how they're saying things, and so on. I think the best way to really uh, get into things is by writing. You know, having written exchange of ideas is probably at a higher level than uh, talking because... Uh, we are so, uh, you know, 
biased when we uh, talk to anyone unless we can go beyond what the person looks like and so on and what he sounds like the physical aspects of a conversation so the physical is not always you know an asset it could be a handicap but writing certainly is a great way to uh, I also uh, think yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead no, I was just gonna say um, Dr. Nelly is making a very good point and Danny I, I see what you're saying but here's something else do you really think in the next generation or two the technology isn't going to for those people feel like you're face to face I mean let me take an example I've, I've met Dr. Nelly in person but I have never met Sylvia in person I don't know if she's still here but matter Sylvia and I have worked so closely that you cannot tell me that I don't know her face to face right <laughs> I haven't met her in person but I know her face to face okay now if I saw her in in physical reality and I'm sure I will one day that's great but I don't feel I have to in order to work with her learn from her etc now that's with crappy Skype cameras you know whiz IQ you know other platforms imagine in the future what it's going to be like video real-time exchanges you know all of us right now could be up. All our pictures up, all our cameras up, no problem with bandwidth, nothing like that. This is what younger people are going to think learning is. And they're going to look at the physical classrooms with desks and they're going to laugh so hard. You know, I was just thinking, I met Charles Goodger a couple of months ago and we met at a mall. The funny thing was that we had never met physically before. This was like the first meeting. So, you know, when people don't know what they look like, they say, well, I'll be wearing a red hat or I'll be carrying a flower. I'll... So when I met Charles, you know, right away, we looked at one another and we knew what we looked like, even though I'd never seen more than the top of his head, right? Like you don't see the body or anything. But it was like, you know, Charles, you know, Nelly, like, we were not strangers, even though we had only met online for a number of years. So meeting, same thing with Jace. When I first met Jace, it was like ridiculous. I said, wow, Jace, you're kind of tall. I didn't know you were that tall. <laughs> Remember Jace when I said that to you? It seemed kind of funny. <laughs> you seem so tall, Jace. I thought you were my size, but you're a lot taller than you seem. So that it was, but, <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's like we knew each other. It wasn't a surprise. It's like, not like, oh my gosh, I thought you were, you know, like there was no surprise. And and as far as personality goes, Jace, were you did I seem any different online as as, as I did? No. Jace That's that's what I mean. That's what I mean. When, when you have a real connection with someone online and you work with them a lot, seeing them in person is just like the icing on the cake. Sure. You know, it, it's it, 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 you don't have to have it to to still enjoy the cake, but I'm not saying I'm against. And, and and also 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 to a cliche idiom, but but as if you needed to need to do that. But what I mean, like when I when I met Dr. Nelly, it was like, and maybe you've had this experience if you met someone in person that you, you no know, yeah. But it's just like a reunion. You start almost crying because it's like, here's your long lost, you know, person like in your meeting, life. And it's just amazing. It's so, like meeting a family member. I kept saying to Jace, wow, you know, we're like family. That's what it felt like, as if we were <laughs> yeah. like relatives. Yeah. And we're not, you know, we're not related in any way. Right. I mean, he's, he's Levine and I'm Deutsch. Like, there's nothing. <laughs> we're not related. That's right. Uh, something John said, which is interesting, he doesn't see people collaborating with each other in the class. Well, certainly not this class when we're just here gabbing and meeting one another. But the cool thing about MOOCs is that you can meet people and that you would not normally connect with who whose ideas and collaboration ideas are more closely aligned with yours than the chance would be if you were in a physical class and the teacher said, okay, you've got to take one of these people here and work on a project. Now, now it's not like that. You know, now, now you don't have to worry. Now, now, of course, there are many people that don't even have the luxury of, of a physical class like that anyway. So then it's not even about choosing online learning over physical classrooms. 
and this is probably my favorite argument or what inspires me most to do this. People who say, oh, MOOCs are boring, I didn't finish, blah, blah, blah. In most cases, those people are comparing it to really expensive, privileged university class experiences. Okay? But, but hey, newsflash, most people don't have that <laughs> option in the world today. So the people that really get into these MOOCs and do them that I find who are yearning for the kind of experience some of us, a minority, get as far as the type of professors and other students and, and people you're around. So, so come on, this is about getting, getting access to education for people who normally don't have it. I, to me, that's, that's more important than anything else. I don't know about you, Jace, but to me, learning is not about learning for exams. For me, learning has always been for me. In other words, learning is what I can, how I can move with it. Okay, whatever I'm learning, whether it's about the French Revolution or whatever I learned in school, you know, in science or whatever, it was always how I could move with this knowledge. What this knowledge would do for me in my world, you know, for my life, for my existence. It wasn't doing exams and, and getting good grades. That was not part of learning. And it seems to me what they're trying to do in schools is promote this, let's learn for the exam. We're not going beyond that. And that really drives me crazy because learning is not about doing exams. It's about learning for yourself so that you can get whatever you want in this world and survive with yourself, firstly, and then maybe with other people as well. So I don't get it. Totally agree. And you know, it's, it's not, it's, it, what, we'll, what I think will never change is that jobs, careers, ways that we need to make money and succeed financially, intellectually, everything, we need to have skills. So it's, it's that, of course this isn't going to change. What's going to change, I feel, is if you're a job, if you have a company, Take a simple example. I think this is already starting to happen, Dr. Nelly. What do you think? That you you don't care so much where the person went to school as much as what skills are they bringing. Moreover, if that person has a degree 20 years ago in economics, but for the last 20 years hasn't done, excuse my French, DIC, no, I won't say it, hasn't done anything <laughs> related to economics, and is trying to get a job at my company because they got a fancy degree in economics from a fancy school. I got somebody else applying who has been learning online continuously for the last 10 years, knows everything up to date about what's going on in economics. Who do I want? And the bottom line is I'll give them tests. It's not gonna be about the diplomas as much. I'm gonna give them my own tests to see who has the skills now who that's going to, you know, be productive for my company? And, I, you know, who do you think it's going to be? It's who is going to make money. So degrees matter now, but it's not going to be, it, they're not going to matter the same way in the future. Wait, 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 wait. What is, what is Susan saying there? It's so large and it went by so quickly. Uh I cried when I, I first that. heard Dr. Nelly <laughs> speak because her understanding of teaching and learning was in my heart from the time I was young. Yes, it is. We don't really change. It's the same ideas that we had when we were young. As a child, others couldn't understand why I wanted to work on projects instead of memorizing facts. They told me I had to wait. Exactly, Susan. That's what it's all about. And we have to feel comfortable with what we think and not be told how to think. You know, whatever Jace thinks, you know, I respect. Why would I disagree with it? It's how he thinks. So how can anybody disagree with somebody else if that's how they think? You know, as long as, you know, nobody's hurting you and they're not killing you, why can't they have their own ideas? You know, why are we forcing everybody to be like us? Why are we better than anybody else? You know, that that's what I don't get. You know, we this world could be so much better and we could move and and innovate and and get things done and you know in better ways if we just 
you know, respected. Somebody mentioned respect. Respected one another's ideas, you know, for what they were. Somebody else's ideas. Why is it wrong for someone to think what they think? You know? Jace? Oh, I'm with you all the way. Am I, am I froze? Oh, I think there's a little delay. No, it's absolutely true. I mean, well, and what Dr. Nelly just said connects directly to what she said earlier about tests. Because the whole idea of these standardized tests is shape and mold how people think, right? As far as how society needs them as dictated by, well, we won't get too into that. You know what I'm saying. But what's going to happen, I think, what is happening, it's not some, you know, revolution as much as it's an evolution because, because what our needs are now in the world for workers for you know need more critical thinking skills we, we computers can do all the you know all the all the rudimentary stuff right it's just going to change it's not going to be just because people don't like the way things are or and there's it's not going to be it's just going to be the way the way things are moving and the internet is you know what's what's pushing all of that to, to happen well time is up i think that we've reached the end of the session i think our magic uh super whiz iq support is just adding you know time to this but um We've come to the end of this. Oh, that, that was me. Oh, it was you. I didn't notice. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't notice. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, you know, if everybody if everybody clears out, I can I can still wrap wrap the chat box. Okay, that would be great. Could you do that, Jace? <laughs> sure. And you know what? I think sure. I think if, um, if everybody could just write down maybe Jace uh, a word or two, and you can maybe uh, get that into the wrap. Like, uh, sure. sure, you know, except for the clap, we can. But Dr. Nelly, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Before we do that, no, no, since we do have 12 minutes, why don't you take two or three more minutes just to recap a little about the Moodle MOOC? Some people will join later, and then we'll do that as a, as a, a farewell. All right, so I'd like to uh, first of all point out there are four Moodle courses in this Moodle MOOC 3, in addition to the daily presentations on various topics some related to online teaching but a lot of them related to life because i believe even if it's a moodle mooc it doesn't mean that we only have to focus on one thing i think that we can focus because things are connected so as far as the moodle MOOC, moodle courses there are four of them for beginners if you're a beginner non-beginners those of you who have done some uh, moodle courses taught some Moodle courses or have taken some Moodle courses uh, for teachers with me. And then there's the practice area as teachers and as managers. What I also want to do is I want to share if Thomas is here, Thomas is going to be helping me out with the uh, Moodle courses. If anyone is interested in helping out, that would be great. Uh, but you do have to uh, realize that there's a lot of uh, time that you'll have to devote to this. And we don't always have it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you the um, syllabus for this so that uh, you can, I think I just lost the class. Uh, did I lose the class? Here we go. So that uh, there's the, um, the link to the syllabus and that'll provide you with everything that you need. You'll get a chance to see the uh, the live presentations, the Moodle website, and the WizIQ course area. Now, it's really important that you get the WizIQ course area, which is right here in the link that I just shared with you, because that's where um, all the information will stay, okay? Because the Moodle courses do not uh, stay there. I uh, delete them after a while. So the WizIQ course area is your best bet. Make sure that you stay there and everything else will be aggregated there when the course the MOOC is over so are there any questions by the way we haven't asked you um if you could add that to the chat or you can add it to the whiz iq course i don't have the link right now but i can certainly get it okay here is the uh the link to the whiz iq course there we go. And um, 
we will be having more explanations about the Moodle, but that's not going to be in the weekly sessions. The weekly sessions will be about the presenters. I just lost it. Oh, there. I think I just lost the um, the link. Does anybody have the link to the WizIQ class? Oh, there. I think I got it. Okay, there. I got it. Thank you. There's the link to the WizIQ course area, okay, where everything will be aggregated. All right. So, Jason, I think that's the wrap-up. <laughs> oh, the wrap up. The wrap up. That's your wrap up. Now I'm gonna do my wrap up. Right. Oh, I didn't mention. Oh, We're gonna oh do the wrap I up, forgot. Wrap I up. forgot to mention. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With all the excitement, I forgot to mention the fact that you'll have a chance <laughs> to get a certificate. Unlike a lot of the MOOCs where you don't get certificates, you get a certificate signed by myself, and badges too. And these badges are amazing. They're on Moodle 2.5. So you'll have to do assignments, not too difficult. You can either do 10 assignments by the presenters on WizIQ or do the Moodle work. Okay, so that's it. Let's Moodle, Jake. <laughs> Jay, sorry. I said Jake. All right. Jace, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Jake. That's all right. I was like... Who's Jake? Hey, I was like, Jake's going to Moodle. Who's Jake? I'm going to rap. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's it's all it's, it's, it's good what i'm gonna do everybody we got, it is all good we got eight minutes i don't really moodle but i'm going to uh dr nelly is going to hook me up with some moodle light you know like bug light miller light i'm going to get some moodle light uh i want to i want to see you put some things in the in the chat it could be anything and i'm going to wrap it so Marco says, hi, happy guys. Here I am, Jace, not Jake in disguise. I'm a man who's not in Japan. I'm in France. I like to rap. I don't dance. Somebody put something in the chat, and I'll take it and try to put it in my rap. I don't got me, by the way, Jason R. Levine. That's Nelly D. Moodling for learning. Get your noodle on fire. Everybody in the future as a teacher will be hired if they're engaged and technology friendly. Here we go. We won't end. See until I get some more fodder, some more content. I'll give it to you hotter and hotter. Noodle and poodle. What's going on? With hide the teacher in the poodle or hide the poodle in the teacher. Together we can reach anywhere we want to go because we're together on the Moodle flow. It's the Moodle light gives me loose lips to sink ships. Justin Hunt, Justin Bieber, excuse me, I'm feeling I got a fever. I'm losing track of what but I need to rap, so give me something in the chat. People doing weird, mysterious, cryptic things, making jokes and inside ways that they communicate, but it's hard for me to relate. Nevis has a emoticon. I gotta keep on going. It's hard. I won't stop flowing, but you gotta give me something to say. Playlist. What's this? <laughs> Can I get a kiss on my list? It's a you, Rube, YouTube. Nobody giving me anything to say. Dean, what am I going to do today? That's okay. People just listening or getting nervous. The sweat starts glistening on my forehead. Damn, who loves me? Susan Dixon, was that you? Oh, my gosh. I love your back. Let me stay on track. Say something better in my rap. Nevis is moodled out. Dolly, what the heck? I think Dr. D's trying to throw me off. What you doing? This isn't easy. Oh my gosh. I give it the mic to you. You can do it for everyone else here. That's what I'm doing, my dear. Okay, I'm going to give you a little taste of something else. I'm going to give you a little geography raps about the world because we've got many people from many countries here. So someone tell me where you're from. Tell me where you're from. Where you're from. From Italy. Italia. Yeah, Italia in Europe is representing. Someone's in Australia, but it's not me. Alina's in Poland and Canada too. You see, Punam's in India. Colombia represented by Aprendamos Espanol. Hajba's in Hungary. And Susan's in Hawaii. I always get jealous and catch envy when I see she's here because she's in the paradise. We got Javi from India. That's nice. I'm in France and also the USA. J A S E J's here to say I'm from a CMC in the place to be. I need more countries. There's J-A-N-E, Jane Puerto Rico in the house. Francesca, where are you from? I think I missed that. Who's in Japan? 
Nelly is causing me. She's such a trickster, jokester, Mohammed in Yemen. Francesca's in Italy before I didn't see, but I know she's there with me, Vince. I think I gotta stop soon, Jesus. Oh, I shouldn't say things like that in my raps. Yay, 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 says Nevis. Also Morocco, and soon I'll be in Tunisia because I need to. I'm going there soon. I keep getting thrown out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you a little taste. If you're still here, some of you were just saying, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to give you a choice. I've got geography raps about the whole world. You tell me which area of the world, and I'll do a little bit of the rap. I've got Africa, Europe. United States, United States uh, uh, Central South America, and I've got, and I've got Asia. Asia. You got to give me a continent or a, or a region. I'm going to give you a little taste. Indonesia. Indonesia is in my Asia song. All right, Middle East is in my Asia song. Here goes the Asia song, a little bit for you. I'll do Africa next time. With Pluto, the countries of Asia will soon become clear to you. Let's get started in Damascus, Syria, then west to Beirut, Lebanon, then on to Tel Aviv in Israel, and Ramallah in Palestine, east across the border to Amman, Jordan, less than Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia, where we off to next, and from there, let me take it to Sinai, Yemen, and Muscat, Oman, then continuing along the Gulf, we keep on to Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, and Doha, Qatar, then it's just a bit northwest to get to Man and Bahrain, and up to Kuwait City in Kuwait. Baghdad, Iraq, Tehran, Iran, straight through the Middle East. We don't cease the distance through Asia will increase. Thank you very much. That's my Asia song. I have a video for that, a song and video on YouTube. Check it out. Asia Fluency MC or Geography Rap Fluency MC. And you can see that or go to my website, go to my YouTube Fluency MC and check my geography playlist. Peace and much respect. Thank you very much. Dr. Nelly, why don't you take us out of here? Thank you, Jason R. Levine. Thank you, everyone, for coming to our Moodle Mook 3 uh, opening. <laughs> I can't hear Dr. Nelly. Maybe that's opening, just me. Opening. Opening. No, you're I'm right. I'm glad you enjoyed the, the, the all Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Where's Dr. Right? Nelly? Here I am. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jason R. Levine. I'm sure you're reading my lips, and you could see that I was saying that. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the oh, opening you, of you. Moodle Mook 3. Thank you very and much. We're looking forward to having a wonderful, wonderful month of uh, 72 sessions, Jace. I'm going to be giving 72. <laughs> <laughs> My husband thinks. Hey, I'll come in. I'll come in there. My husband. Let me let me know when let me know when you need me. Okay. My husband thinks I'm nuts. He's probably right. But um, anyway. <laughs> Those husbands, those wives, they're always right about that stuff. <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. So uh, have a wonderful weekend. Bye, everybody. I have another session coming today. So get ready for week four of Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014 very soon. Today. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.